Hi there, Sarah of Get Weaving and in this session we're going to be looking at moving from weaving a length that has possibly been a scarf into making it into a garment. Most of mine are just, just start off as long skinny pieces of fabric like a long scarf but then it's how you put it together and make it fit. Um, so hopefully this might help you build your confidence and encourage you to have a go. <laughs> we'll talk about suitable yarns for the project later on. I've got mine chosen. Uh, this is the pattern that I'm going to be making. This is T001. The top on the cover was made in different cottons, but I'm going to make the long sleeve version in some hand spun wool. It, it'll be slightly shorter. So now is the time to sort out the pattern for your fabric. I personally don't see much point in just weaving a random piece of fabric and then hoping it might fit a pattern. It, it doesn't work. It's too short, too narrow. Um, it's so frustrating then trying to get your fabric to make fit a pattern that you have. So what I do is I work out my pattern first and make sure it fits you. There, I think there are two really good reasons for this. One is hand weaving hates being unpicked. <laughs> you end up with holes in it and it's depressing as well. You've spent all this time making something and then you put it on and you fidget with it all day long because the neck's too big, the shoulders are too white, whatever. So make a mock-up. That's what's behind me on the dress dummy. That's a mock-up of T001. Next to it is the full size version of the pattern that I send out with the instruction booklet and it has uh, several sizes on it. They're all marked up. I wanted it to look like a commercial pattern so that if you've done any sewing it's not too weird. It, it makes sense. <laughs> so the sizes are all marked. So this pattern has a front, a back and a sleeve pattern on it. So obviously for your garment, you're going to cut two fronts, two backs, two sleeves, and then there's some finishing off to do. Now I started weaving when I was 10, I was given a 12 inch weave master loom and I learned a lot just working on that small loom. And then I went to college and I was taught to weave on a 24 inch dryad four shaft table loom. And I was taught to spin as well at the same time by the same teacher which was wonderful because I could start making my own clothes. Um, it was just so exciting. We didn't do much dyeing there, so most of my stuff was in natural colours. It was Jacob fleece, but that was lovely. And I made um, a very simple jacket, which was in pieces. I, having narrow fabric didn't worry me too much. Years ago, I'd made um, a sort of like a riding jacket from Harris Tweed which I seem to remember was about 24 inches wide. So that couldn't be cut out in the normal fashion where you fold your fabric in half across the width and cut it out double. So I'd already realized that there were different ways of perhaps cutting patterns out. So with all of my patterns, I suggest that it's cut out as a single layer. Um, there's no way then that the, the two layers are gonna move against each other. So you, you cut one, front, the other front, uh, left back, right back, left sleeve, right sleeve and so forth. And inside the pattern, what I do is I put a layout. Now, the other thing with these is that there's very little wastage because all my pattern pieces are made to be the same width. So you can see it on the back of it as well. So the only little bit that you actually cut away is a tiny bit for the neckline and a tiny bit for the armhole. I can't bear the thought that I've spent all this time <laughs> weaving a piece of fabric just to throw half of it in the dustbin. So all my patterns um, try to make the basic pieces the same width and then you can keep the selvages and use them uh, or you can cut them off but then you'd have to seal all the edges and we'll talk about cutting and sealing edges in another time. So what you have is a multi-size pattern the first thing you have to do is figure out what size you are. <laughs> Please don't guess. <laughs> um, sizes do vary 
These are UK measurements on the back. I've put a measurements chart. Um, some of them start small, some of them go up to large, extra large, 2XL and so forth. And I've got a little booklet called uh, Making a Mock-Up. And inside there is a measurements chart. You can get these online as well. But I've done one here, so that's quite useful. Now I have just, I hope, <laughs> put this booklet on in my shop as a PDF. Um, I haven't done it before. I hope it works. Please get back to me and let me know what you think. The main thing is that it's um, a booklet. If you can print two-sided, then you can assemble it just like the one that you would receive from me through the post. If you can only print single-sided, you'll obviously use slightly more paper and every other page will be blank. But that doesn't matter because you can use that for your notes. So <laughs> let me know whether that works or not. I've sent out lots of these, but some people still say, oh, I think that's a waste of time. I, Well, it isn't. It really isn't. Um, the second reason, I think, for making a mock-up is that it gets you to practice instructions, which is really useful. I try and make them as simple as possible. I've got diagrams in them. There are lots and lots of we, um, sorry, sewing books you can refer to how to put neck binding on or how to put a zip in. Um, I find the Dorling Kindersley ones are really good. Um, but so they're not over complicated. And then depending on what fabric you weave it from, I have a customer who has made this pattern up 20 times, different lengths, different fabrics, different finishes, uh, different embellishments, dresses, absolutely wonderful. So you can work with one pattern make it completely different. That's why on the back of the um, pattern booklet for this pattern, I do not put loom requirements. I put finished fabric requirements because depending on what you're weaving with and on, your warp and your weft might be completely different um, to the one I've made. So you perhaps need to do a little bit of working out yourself first. I have helped people with that before now, but uh, I will be sharing a project sheet with you later on to show how I work all this out. So you've got your pattern, you've got a measurements chart, measure yourself in centimetres or inches, but not both. And don't guess, nobody else needs to see these. It really doesn't matter. You know, we are what we are. Most people I know have different size or, or different ratios, bust to hip. So you might need to grade from a 12 to a 14 or a 16 to an 18. You might be slightly shorter. So this little book here has got lots of suggestions on how to alter your mock-up. I make mine in calico. You can see, I hope I write on it. So I know I've got a left front, a right front, a left front row and so forth. Um, because when you cut your weaving out, you have to be very careful. Most of my weaving is rigid tail woven and it's the same on both sides. But you don't want to be cutting out two left fronts. <laughs> that would be very sad. Uh, there's another book that I've used a great deal. This is called Fast Fit by Sandra Betsina. Very, very useful on how to alter patterns. Shoulders wider, sleeves long, whatever. Anyway, so that's a very useful one as well. So you have taken your set of measurements. If if it helps, get somebody to help you. Uh, write them down and see how they differ or are the same to the measurements chart on the back of the pattern. And then you can decide which would be your best size to cut out. Now, personally, I would prefer to cut out a slightly bigger size and take it in than cutting out a smaller size and trying to add to it, which is really depressing. So if you have one measurement bigger than the other, go for the bigger measurement and, and adjust the rest. So there are lots and lots of things you can do with this. As I said, I've shortened this one and I haven't shortened it from the hem. I've shortened it from the waist up because it has vents in it at the sides and at the back. And I didn't want those to end up in the wrong place. So I've lifted it from the waist. Um, the, the cotton version is lovely, it's slightly longer, more like a tunic, but for me that would be too hot in wool. So I've shortened it. Um, I've taken the shoulders in a little bit. I don't do it by cutting the armhole away, I do it by actually lifting the shoulder like that. That way the size of the armhole doesn't change. Um, 
and then the sleeve will still fit, which is quite important. <laughs> but how do I know all this? Because I've done it. <laughs> and it's not worth taking shortcuts. So, yeah, there's lots of ways you can alter things. Try it on. Make sure it's comfortable. Is it long enough? Ghastly if you cut it too short, because then you've got to start fiddling around with adding hems and borders and this and the other. So, yeah, is it comfortable? I sometimes wander around the house in mine to just check it feels okay and I can sit down in it or whatever and the sleeves aren't catching and, you know, you've got to, in my opinion, want to wear this. It's no good making it and then <laughs> hating it. So, you've got your size. You make your mock-up. As I said, I always do mine in calico because it's nice and firm. I find it tricky making them in pattern fabric. I used to, but then of course I can't see where anything is. Do your alterations and write them down. Write them on your mock-up, sometimes called a twirl, sometimes called a test piece or a pre-test. And alter your paper pattern accordingly and write it all on there as well. So that when you cut out your hand-woven version and put it together, it'll fit you perfectly. Don't, it's not worth trying to cut corners. You might have spent six months weaving this piece of fabric. You might have spun all the yarn. It's, it's heartbreaking if you don't like it when you put it on. There, uh, right at the end of one of these sessions, I'm going to do one called help. <laughs> what you can do when it hasn't quite worked out the way you, you thought it might, there is always a way of rescuing it, unless the fabric is not right for the garment that's that's the only thing that i would say if it's too heavy too thick uh, too firm whatever then sometimes you have to just be really big and say well i'll put this away and i'll use it for something else there's there's nothing worse than cutting something up and and then you put it on and you just never want to wear it um, you should be able to wear it like any clothing that you almost forget you've got it on and then somebody will say oh that looks really nice because you're just looking really comfortable and and happy in it so you've made your mock-up um, you've written all your notes and please do write them down have a notebook or a folder or something write everything down I have done my mock-up and then maybe not cut the garment out for some months probably because it's the wrong season I've just woven some wool and now it's coming into spring and then summer and I don't feel like sewing wool at the moment so it gets all wrapped up with notes um, <laughs> and I make a note where I can find the notes and then it's all ready to go when you feel like it. That might sound a bit frivolous but yeah you have to feel like doing it. Sewing and weaving and what have you are wonderful but you have to be in the mood for it. So next time we will look at the yarns that we're going to make this garment from. Now, it has been suggested to me that I add my shop and uh, social media details and what have you. And I will learn <laughs> how to do this. But for now, um, thanks to Bob Dylan. That's my Instagram account. <laughs> That's my Facebook account. Oopsie. <laughs> That's my shop. That's where you can buy the patterns, the booklets, um, and, uh, well, unfortunately, our first two books are out of print now, but you can still get hold of Get Weaving. So, <laughs> thank you for listening and watching. I hope that's been of some help. I'm just doing these as short snippets to build up. So, making your mock-up tick. Very important. Have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>